أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال تعالى في القرآن الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نصوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون. We seek protection, refuge, salvation with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala from the cursed, the rejected Shaytan. In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the especially gracious. All praise and all thanks and all glory belongs to none but Allah. We praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We beg Allah Ta'ala to bestow His peace, blessing, and mercy on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on His companions, on the Ansar who helped them, on His wives, His children, and on those who follow Him. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala admonishes mankind, admonishes the believers in the Quran when Allah Ta'ala says, O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah. Be conscientious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't let any and, and let not let every let every person look at what they have sent forth for tomorrow meaning al-akhirah meaning the day of judgment meaning the, the day where everything will be accounted for the uh, yawm al-qiyamah the day of reckoning the overwhelming day the day where truth and justice will fully be established. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and let not, and let, and be not like those who forgot Allah ta'ala, meaning those who became disobedient to Allah, those who don't know Allah, those who don't know their purpose in life. And Allah ta'ala caused them then to forget about their own selves. So they forget about who they are, why they're here, what their purpose in life is, and they run hither and thither trying to search for peace and trying to search for their purpose. May Allah protect us from them, from that state. And Allah calls those people out and says, those are the fasiqun, those are the rebellious and the disobedient. And Allah Ta'ala then says, not equal are the dwellers of the fire and the dwellers of Jannah. It is the dwellers of Jannah that will be successful. And this, my brothers and sisters in Islam, I remind myself, as I've reminded before, and as inshallah I will remind again with the tawfiq and hadayat of Allah that this is the only, the only definition of success, to be counted amongst the people of Jannah. Anything short of that is losing. And that is what we're struggling and striving for, to be counted amongst the people of Jannah. May Allah Ta'ala make this a reality for all of us. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala again declares in the Qur'an, as we talked about last time, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The 23rd chapter of the Qur'an, ayah number 1 and 2, Allah says, Indeed, successful are the believers, those believers whom offer the salah with khushu, with a sense of Submissiveness, concentration, humbleness, a sense of where they are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last time we discussed some of the traits, some of the gems, some of the jewels of the salah. Namely, we talked about the takbir that we pronounce constantly throughout the salah. Where we say Allahu Akbar, and we say Allahu Akbar when going to the ruku and in the sajda, and changing between the sajda, and sitting in with, the, with the, the jalsa, the sitting position. So we're declaring this constantly. And we reflected together 
where the scholars mentioned that this, the impact of it, this as it relates to Salah, the meaning of it is that it means Allah is greater. And so when we're declaring that Allah is greater, this is an incomplete thought, an incomplete sentence as far as the translation is concerned. And so the scholars mention that you, as the one who is in the Salah, and you're constantly saying this, this should shock you and shock me into remembering who or what Allah is greater than. And Allah Ta'ala is greater than whatever comes to our mind and heart at that moment. It should shock us into knowing what we're about to do, what we are in. Allah is greater than that. Allah is greater than our children that we might think of. The food that we might eat. The bills that we got to pay. The car that we're driving. SubhanAllah, whatever happened is happening or will happen. Allah is greater than that. So we must constantly be reminding ourselves of this impact. And I reminded myself and you of the ayah in the Quran in Surah Al-Zumar that tells us of this where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدَرِهِ and not have they appraised and estimated and evaluated Allah Ta'ala truly as Allah Ta'ala deserves to be estimated, appraised and evaluated and on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the entire earth in his hand as related in this ayah and also as a hadith tells us and the question will be said where are the kings of the earth? where are the kings of the earth? where are those people who claim to be great when Allah is greater than anything that exists? He is the greatest but Allah is greater than anything that can come to our mind. So I remind this myself again to you that inshallah we need to keep reminding ourselves of this. You know, some of you might be thinking, well, brother, you talked about this last time. But how it has it done? How, how has it impacted me and you? If it hasn't, then we should be sitting here night and day and talking about this, subhanAllah. Just on this point alone. And we reflected on subhanAllah Rabbi al Azim in the Ruku where the translation of this is Sin Baha is the root of Subhan and this Subhan is an exa exaggerated form of this Sin Baha Sin Baha subh literally means that which glides and floats Subhan means the most overwhelmingly perfectingly gliding in above who rabbi subhan rabbi my master how perfected and floating and glorious is my master and look at again brothers and sisters in islam of the position that you're saying that of the position that i am saying that we are in a position of imperfectness in the ruku we don't walk around like this we don't walk like this this is an imperfected state. We are submitting ourselves and bowing down to the perfect one, to the glorified one. And we're saying that masters al azim meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supreme and powerful and mighty and strong. And again, we are in a state of weakness and a state of exposure in a state where a little child could come and knock us down. The wind could come and blow and knock us down, subhanAllah. My dad was leaving Salah one time in a park like that. And he went from Ruku and it had a slight little gradient to it, a slight little slope. And when he got up, he fell almost backwards. We're in an imperfect state. So remember that, brothers and sisters in Islam, that Allah Ta'ala is the most powerful and the most uh, exalted and supreme and so we should be leaning upon that one as the one who 
needs no support, has no support, and whom everything in the creation is leaning and supporting, being supported by. That is, that is the connection you and I are having with Allah five times a day. So how can we be weak after that? How is it that, that the dunya takes us away after that? And when we go on the sajda, we are saying, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, that how perfected and glorious and above any imperfections is my master, the most high, and you cannot go any lower than that. And the most honorable thing about ourselves, our faces are hitting the ground at that time, and it's even up below our bottoms at that second. And how, what an honorable position that is to truly give yourself and, and, and put your face on the ground and be connected and give yourself. I mean, you cannot be, there can't be any more humble position than that. What, what can you do more humbly than that? And our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa told us that we're closest to Allah in that position. So increase the dua. And the scholars mention of how that in the fara'id you would state those du'a in Arabi and scholars, one opinion is that even you can say it in your own language in the non-fara'id salah in the nawafil and the sunnah you can say it in even your own language your du'a and ask and give and we reflected upon this brother of ours Joshua Evans, may Allah Ta'ala keep him on Islam of how when he saw the salah the first time of Muslims praying he said that is not that's not prayer. Prayer is when you raise your hands or you call upon God. This is more than prayer. This is worship. He said that every major book that he read, one of the goodness that was left in there is he saw people constantly was engaged in this act. Where he read from, I mean, he said in, in, in the Bible it talks about how Jesus, peace be upon him, went to this specific garden, I'm forgetting the name of the garden, and he put his face on the ground. And they claim that this is supposed to be God. So God is putting his face on the ground to God, calling upon God. How is that supposed to happen? The point is, is that, again, this is worship. And you and I are not doing a favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, by, by worshiping Allah. Or this is for our own good. Because in this weak state where we're quickly praying five times a day, if we pray five times a day, right? How many excuses come up throughout the day? Hmm? SubhanAllah, where we don't make it to our salah. How many things to get us and take us away where Rasulullah told us in hadith very clearly that the one who, pray, who misses one fault, one fault, salah, it would be better for that person to lose everything in their family and all their wealth. So imagine right now, if you lost, may Allah for, forbid, your whole family and all your wealth, you became homeless and you were living on the Salt River banks. You know, like some of these people do, subhanAllah, that we should have empathy for. Rasulullah told us it's it's better for, for that to happen than you miss one fart salah. One fart salah. So when, in, when brothers and sisters in Islam are we going to wake up and realize that this salah is truly the first thing, truly the first act that proves our iman. That proves is the first walking the walk. The greatest walking the walk after you talk the talk. After you and I talk the talk. Yeah, we stand up and we say, yeah, we believe in Allah. We believe in His angels and His books and His prophets and the Day of Judgment and the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good and the bad thereof. But how are you going to prove it? Because a lot of those things the non-Muslims say also. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that between a person, shirk, between, between a person and shirk and kufr, is the barrier, is the wall of salah. So imagine you're standing, and there's a barrier here between you, a wall between you and me, 
and on the other side is shirk and kufr. So you remove the salah, shirk and kufr are just coming right in. It's coming right in. Shirk and kufr. The worst, de the worst sins that a human being can commit. That if astaghfirullah, the scholars mention, if we die on shirk, there is no forgiveness. If we die on it, knowingly committing shirk, there's no forgiveness for that sin. That type of a sin. Dying on it. May Allah Ta'ala give me tawfiq and tawfiq, inshaAllah. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Zim wa nafa'ana wa yakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawal al-Kareem wa lakum barrahu al-Rahim. Let us ask Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness of Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد بعدد من قاد وقام وعلى اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين اللهم صل على محمد في الآخرين اللهم بارك على محمد في الأولين اللهم بارك على محمد في الآخرين وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وشهد محمد عبد الرسول أما بعد فسيد. So again, brothers and sisters in Islam, we've been talking about الصلاة. We've been talking about the impact of it with regards to our lives. That if we pray the salah with khushu, that Allah Taala lists this as the the first quality of the successful believers, and that on يوم القيامة the first questioning that will happen to us. Will be the question that occurs with regards to meeting this duty and obligation of a salah, and that when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was given uh, the pillars of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa taala elected and selected to send Jibrail alayhi salam for that. But when it comes to salah, look how Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed it. We all know the beautiful story of Isra and Miraj, right? Allah taala called his beloved, his Rasul, to Jannah to the heavens, to the skies, and reveal the order of Salah up there. So this tells you something about this beautiful act of worship, subhanAllah. And that brothers and sisters in Islam, no matter where we're at, we need to hold tight to this obligation. That for if we miss even just one of it, our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that it's better that you lose your whole wealth and all of your family than you miss one fat Salah. And that because of that, this, subhanAllah, this, this, this salah connects us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day, giving us a direct connection, a direct line, a direct call up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we talked about, and last year, subhanAllah, we went in detail with regards to Al Fatiha and reflecting upon Al Fatiha. That if we just know the meaning of Al Fatiha and we scratch at the surface of this, and we're reciting this 17 times a day, how this connects us back to the summary of Islam. Because Al-Fatiha is, is called Ummur, Umm Al-Qur'an, the essence of the Qur'an. So if we know this, subhanAllah, we should be connected back 17 times a day minimum with knowing the summary of Qur'an and the summary of Islam, subhanAllah. And subhanAllah, I say this first to myself and you, brothers and sisters in Islam. I know we all live busy lives. I know we got tasks to do. I know we got work to do. I know, subhanAllah, yesterday, for example, I was uh, judging at my, at, at my uh, kids' school, you know, and mashallah, 70-80% of the people in that school are Muslim. The teachers, many of them are, 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 are Muslim, subhanAllah. But just go look with regards to Salat al-Maghrib, how many of them, subhanAllah, ended up praying Salat al-Maghrib. When they know it's an obligation and a fard. What, what, what are we afraid of, subhanAllah? What are we afraid of when we give up this number one obligation upon us? 
And wallahi subhanallah, by the grace and mercy of Allah, those people who hold tight to their deen, with the first public symbol of it, no matter where we're at, and, and they practice this, and the non-Muslims, since we're living predominantly in a non-Muslim country, they know that, they will never be held back, subhanAllah. They will never be held back. Just a few weeks ago, one of the young children in a halaqa that, that I'm, I'm involved with, he said, my father works in a clinic here locally. And my father, alhamdulillah, he's a doctor. He prays the salah in his office. So he said on one occasion, he, he accidentally left the door open. And a nurse walked in on him, a non-Muslim nurse. You know? And he continued on. Didn't break his salah, subhanAllah. Uh, continued on his salah. The nurse watched, saw, went out. Do you know, he said after one month, that nurse took her shahada. Without even any word or any exchange or what have you, that nurse took her shahada and became a Muslim. Said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And I've read articles myself from brothers and sisters involved in da'wah who say that brothers and sisters never be ashamed or shy with regards to who you are as a Muslim. Fulfill the obligations that Allah Ta'ala has put upon us and never feel shy about it. They give countless stories like this of how a person would pray in an airport or on the side of the street or on top of a taxi cab or whatever it is. And subhanAllah, people never call them all extremists or this and that and all these other things that are being associated with regards to our beautiful way of life of Islam and Muslims. But wallahi, they respect them more. They respect them more. SubhanAllah. Just a few weeks ago, just this happened to me. In my office, I'm praying my salah. And uh, a person that I don't know very well, he's an engineer there, he walked in on me. And what can you do? He stood there for a while. So I, well, how else can you send a message except doing this for a brief moment and continuing on in the salah? He knew what that meant. You know, this means stop. He walked away. After the salah, I texted him. I just simply sent him a text and I said, uh, I, I noticed you walked in. I was in the middle of my prayers. Islamically, once you start prayers, you don't, you don't break it unless there's an, an absolute emergency. And if, if, there's not, if there's anything you need, please call me. Otherwise, have a great weekend. And subhanAllah, the next time I spoke with that man, he apologized to me. He apologized and said, I'm sorry, I, I walked in and I forgot to reply back to your text. You know? And I know you were doing something. I know you were doing something. SubhanAllah. Yeah, that's something, inshallah, hopefully you'll realize what that something was, subhanAllah. So that's the thing, brothers and sisters in Islam. Let's hold tight to our deen. Let's hold tight to the salah. Let's not be fooled by shaitan. Let's not be fooled into thinking that this is going to hold us back. Inshallah, you will see that the izzah, the honor, the position, the power, it's all with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like Allah Ta'ala has control over us, Allah Ta'ala has control over all of creation. Allah doesn't say, Rabbil Mu'mineen in Al-Fatiha. He says, Rabbil Alameen. Allah is the master of everything that exists. And Allah Ta'ala is, is their master too. Whether they accept it or not. Our Imam in Kansas City, <laughs> SubhanAllah, the same thing he said one time I was praying somewhere. And, I said, uh, and somebody comes up to me. He said this was somewhere in public, I forgot the specifics of it, but that person came up, came up to me, kept yelling to me, what are you doing man? What's going on? What are you going up and down for and all this? He said, I didn't break my salah. I finished my salah. I said, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi What are you doing? What's going on? SubhanAllah, you know how he replied? He said, I was praying to my Lord and to your Lord. That's what I was doing. I was praying to my Lord and to your Lord. One of my friends in college, the same thing happened to him at work. He said, I was in a stairwell, and this man from the other side of the hallway came in from the other side yelling, hey man, what you doing? What's going on? And he got really aggressive. He started going up to me. He's like, I just did this very gently, and I kept continuing until I finished, and I explained to him. SubhanAllah, in, in college, one incident, I had a, one of my, uh, my friends who had just taken shahada. And this was probably the first time that he had done salah in public and we go to this classroom just like this and we go put our sajada down we're praying 
publicly, this person comes in. I can't remember if it was a guy or a girl. She, uh, she or he came and sat right in the front, maybe one foot or two foot from us. And we're continuing, you know, and, you know, subhanAllah, uh, the pressure's on and what have you. And this person's like staring down at us and what have you. And I'm saying, uh, after I finished, I said, Salaamu Alaikum Wa Salaamu Alaikum Wa And this brother was a, uh, you know, European, Amer uh, white American. And so, you know, when they become a little under pressure, you can easily tell what it was. He, his white color had turned totally pink, you know? And he was sweating. And I was like, SubhanAllah, we need to go through this in order to get trained, inshallah. We need to go through this in order to get trained. And after a while, inshallah, it becomes easy, you know. May Allah Ta'ala give me tawfiq and you tawfiq to hold tight to the salah, to be the hafiz of salah, to be protectors of our prayer, guardians of our prayer. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala rid us of any, anim, uh, any holding back or any of shame or any, anything that would prevent us from not meeting our obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us of the times that, that we miss our salah. May Allah ta'ala guide us to be of those who establish the salah in ourselves, in our family, in our children. Let's make dua to Allah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi lakhirati hasanata wa fina adha bannaam. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw wahta'na. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته ولا الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين اللهم اجعلنا من المسلمين والمؤمنين والقانتين والصادقين والصابرين والخاشعين والمتصدقين والصائمين والحافظين فروجهم والذاكرين الله كثيرا اللهم اجعلنا من الآمن وعمل الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر اللهم اجعلنا من المخلصين اللهم اجعلنا من المخلصين اللهم اجعلنا من المخلصين اللهم إني نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب جهنم ومن فتنة المحي وممات ومن فتنة الشر مسيه الدجال اللهم إنك عفو تحب الله وفعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب الله وفعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب الله وفعف عنا اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وكبيرنا وصغيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم اجعلنا من المؤمنين يا الله accept all of our prayers and all of our deeds and forgive us of our shortcomings and our sins and ya Allah we commit sins and mistakes and errors night and day and none can forgive them except you and you love to forgive ya Allah so forgive us and ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are lost running hither and thither except with your hidayat ya Allah and you are the best to give hidayat so give us hidayat ya Allah to Sirat al mustaqim to the Kalima of La ilaha illallah Muhammad al Rasulullah, to the nur and light and guidance of the Quran, and the nur and the light and the guidance of the Sunnah of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we raise our hands this beautiful day of Jummah for you, Ya Allah, to you, Ya Allah, to alleviate the hardship and pain and suffering and rancor and oppression and bloodshed and violence that are happening to our brothers and sisters in Syria, in Palestine, in Iraq, in all the Muslim lands. And Ya Allah Ta'ala, bestow upon us a beautiful patience to be of those who successfully pass our exams and our hardships and those things that hold us back, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Ya Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, magnify our strengths and rid us of our weaknesses, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah Ta'ala, we raise our hands to you to make us amongst those who make shukr to you and are grateful to you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Ya Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, bring unity and peace and love and mercy in our hearts towards each other, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, bring peace and reconciliation to between us, Ya Allah between all the believers, between all of our families, 
between the fathers and the sons and the siblings and all the, the issues and problems that we have towards each other, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, unite us under the criteria of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Rabbi ja'alani muqeem as-salati wa min dhurriyati Rabbana wa taqabbal du'a wa taqabbal du'a wa taqabbal du'a Ibadullah inna Allahi ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa itai dhul qurba wa anhan al-fahsha wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaru wa la dhikru Allahi ta'ala wa awla wa azzu wa jalla wa tammu wa hammu wa akbar wa aqim as-salat